Hello, Rich Keeble here, and welcome to this. Uh, before we get too much into this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I thought I'd start doing some videos uh, about some other aspects of my life and um, some of the work I've done. And what better way to start than a TV show that was out recently uh, here in the UK on ITV1. I believe it's now called. I remember when it was simply called ITV. And it's, it, it came out on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of January this year. Uh, a three-part ITV drama, which I believe is now available on ITVX which I think is what they used to call ITV Hub. And it's called Stonehouse. And it stars uh, the lovely Matthew McFadden. I'll read you the blurb. How about that? Um, a three-part series by John Preston for ITV. The strangest ever true story in British politics. A former cabinet minister fakes his own death and tries to start a new life with his mistress on the other side of the world. John Stonehouse, a rising star in the Labour Party of the 1960s, is tipped as a future prime minister. He seems to have it all, charisma, good looks, intelligence, and a happy home life. But behind Stonehouse's public face lurks another man entirely, a colossal chancer whose flaws will bring his career and marriage crashing down. Uh, there's, uh, hopefully you can see the poster there of Matthew McFadden as Stonehouse in the sea. Uh, because that's, uh, I, I don't think that's too much of a spoiler for me to say that he tries to fake his own death by making out that he's drowned, by uh, leaving his clothes by the, by the side of the sea and uh, swimming out. Matthew McFadden uh, plays the, uh, the main role, the titular role, titular, uh, of John Stonehouse. So Matthew McFadden... If you don't know who he is, uh, perhaps you've been living under a rock, or maybe you just don't know who he is, which is fair enough. He played Mr. Darcy in one of the Pride and Prejudice things, uh, the one that didn't have Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. He's been in Spooks, Ripper Street, Quiz, as the coughing colonel, or coughing major. The coughing colonel sounds better. But most recently, he's been playing Tom Wamsgans in the HBO drama series Succession for which he has received a Primetime Emmy Award, two BAFTA Awards, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. So, you know, I don't think it's outrageous for me to say that he's the best character in that. 100% uh, he's very good. Um, and I would say his American accent is flawless. And that's my professional opinion as a non-American. Succession is a rarity for me in that it's one of those shows that everyone talks about that I've actually seen. So for once I can go, oh yes, rather than just nodding inanely and uh, hoping nobody asks me a specific question about something. So having seen Succession, I was uh, delighted when I found out that I'd actually booked a role uh, on a show that starred Matthew McFadden. And he also stars in it with uh, his real life wife, Keeney Hawes, who actually I, I've seen in more things, because uh, they were in spooks together. Uh, but I've actually seen her in Bodyguard, Line of Duty, Mrs. Wilson, uh, Year of the Rabbit, which also starred Susan Wacoma, who I appeared in Porters with. She's uh, lovely. So I shot it a year ago and it just came out. That's uh, that's the magic of television. So, uh, yeah, early December 2021, I got an invitation to do a self-tape. Uh, if you don't know what a self-tape is, it's how we do a lot of auditions these days, especially since Covid. Uh, they send you some sides which is what they call basically extracts from the script and ask you to perform your audition, film it yourself. Uh, sometimes I'll record the other lines myself and play them in uh, if my wife's not available. But yeah, yeah, the idea is that you maybe get someone else to read in, be it a spouse, friend or a uh, burglar that just happens to be there at that point. And then you send it off to them and then uh, they might invite you for another meeting afterwards or they might give you the role based on that. So I was lucky. I did, I did a self-tape on the 1st of December 2021. I've got written here. I submitted it on the 6th and on the 8th of December, I got invited to a Zoom chat with the casting director and the director, John S. Baird, uh, where they basically told me I got it, which was lovely because I was thinking maybe that would have been another, um, another step. Uh, John S. Baird, in, incidentally, is a Scottish director who did uh, Filth and the Stan and Ollie film, starring Steve Coogan and John C. Riley. Steve Coogan, I love, of course. Uh, John C. Riley, just looking up, what was the um, John, Lee Ry uh, John C. Riley does that bizarre character on uh, Tim and Eric, doesn't he? Um, uh, I'm just going to quickly Google that and then cut this out. 
Oh yeah, Dr. Steve Brule. Is that how you say his name? Check it out with Dr. Steve Brule. Well, I think that's a spin-off, isn't it? Because it was on Tim and Eric. Uh, anyway, a very bizarre and entertaining character. Anyway, uh, Jonas Baird, lovely guy. And of course, uh, I love the actual uh, Laurel and Hardy themselves. So yeah, found that I got the job before Christmas, so that was really nice. Uh, then into the new year, uh, 2022, um, because it was very COVID-y at that point, I had to have someone come around to give me a COVID test uh, on the 3rd of January, uh, because I then had a costume fitting on the 4th of January, where um, I got picked up and went in and tried on various costumes. Without any spoilers, my scenes with Matthew are set in the late 80s, so... Um, wardrobe and stuff had to reflect that and uh, unusually for me uh, I had a wig fitting on the 6th of January so I had another Covid test the day before and then I got picked up and went in and tried on some wigs uh, which was a lot of fun. There was a kind of a mullet option uh, that we tried on then there was a kind of a Barry Gibb one. Uh, amazing wigs these ones these are proper TV wigs you know cost thousands of pounds. Uh, there was a third one which I can only describe as the puby one and then there was the one that we ultimately went with, which was just a kind of a fairly normal one, but just with a bit of a receding hairline. Yeah, so then 7th of January, I had a, a table read, which is where traditionally you would, everyone would sit round in uh, a room. So all the cast, director, producers, execs, writers, whoever, people from the channel, and then you would basically perform the script uh, it, it out loud. We did that over Zoom for this one. So uh, Matthew and Keely were both on the Zoom. Uh, then on the 21st of January, they had a rehearsal, uh, which I couldn't actually make because I was filming another show, which I can't talk about yet. But when I can, that will be in the description. And uh, if I do a video about it, then that might be here or something. And then the 2nd of Feb, I had another COVID test and then uh, traveled up to Coventry, stayed in a hotel, uh, had a hilarious anecdote from the hotel where I was convinced there weren't any tea making facilities. I was about to go downstairs and absolutely lose it with someone, you know, take a shoe off, throw it somewhere. Uh, but it turned out there was a little sort of um, shelf with everything on it that was just a bit hidden. So actually it was fine. Yeah, I mean, in the hotel uh, for dinner, I had uh, a pizza and a, a bit of cake. It was actually very nice. And then the morning uh, on the 3rd of Feb, I went on to set, got my wig stuck on. It was glued on pretty heavily. Uh, went to the old trailer, put my costume on and uh, yeah, th then did the shoot. So I didn't have any scenes with Keely, which is a bit of a shame. So I only saw her on the Zoom, but you know, she seemed very nice. Because I'd missed out on the rehearsal, this was kind of my first time meeting Matthew. But yeah, basically my first scene with him, I got two scenes with him. So just for context, it kind of goes from his sort of um, career going in the right direction to the 60s through to when he's kind of come out the other side. He's been brought back to the UK, a bit disgraced or whatever. But then in the 80s, he was sort of uh, appearing on chat shows to uh, sort of talk about his life. So I play a TV producer on that particular show. So my first scene with him is when I'm talking to him uh, prior to him going on. You never know with a, with a show like this whether A, you're going to be in it at all, or B, if you are, whether they're just going to have all the lines going over the leads shot, do you know what I mean? So the camera's on him and you hear me off camera, but luckily it was all in, which was very nice. And then we had the, uh, the other scene where it was sort of creeping into his dressing room. A little bit of inside uh, TV magic here is that when uh, me and Amy go into the door in the corridor, uh, that's not the same door we come out of. So we actually go into a door. I think it was an office there. We go into an office, we cut there. And then the door we come out of uh, is actually a storage cupboard in the other room. So that's, you know, that that's clever, isn't it? Um, something interesting as well is that when, when you see us sort of creeping through, so you, I've got my hand on the banister there, sort of um, creeping down into the into the dressing room. Because that was the shot from that angle, and they wanted to do a reverse from the other side, they, because they couldn't get a camera in uh, behind me in that corridor, they, in front of the banister, they built this platform um, so they could put the camera where we were standing, and then I would just sort of come in a, a few feet in front of where I was, 
pretending I'm in the same place. I had to kind of pretend I uh, pretend there was a banister there just so my arm was sort of lifted up at the same angle so it would cut with the other shot and sort of sneak down that way. Uh, they didn't use that shot. Maybe that was my terrible banister acting. Um, but anyway, uh, I was very pleased they used pretty much everything we did. Uh, yeah, it's always very nice not to be cut. Um, I've been cut from a few things. Perhaps we'll do a video on that at some point. I was desperate to ask him about one of my favourite bits in Succession where he goes to his sort of, is it his stag do? And he ends up swallowing his own. I was desperate to talk to him about that scene, but, um, you know, if in doubt, don't say it. Uh, but yeah, he was he was lovely, really lovely to work with. Taller than I was expecting. So there we have it. Uh, Stonehouse on ITVX and possibly Britbox, I think. Uh, yeah, check it out. I'm in episode three. I sort of top and tail it. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, due to the in order of appearance nature of the credits, um, my name is is first at, at the end. So that's that's really nice as well. Uh, funny, a, a friend of mine, his father-in-law, said that uh, he saw the credit come up and he was just like, oh, I didn't realise that your mate Rich was a producer now. <laughs> he didn't realise that that was my character. <laughs> he thought I was actually a producer. Oh, bless him. Thank you. Uh, yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more behind the scenes or BTS content. Uh, thanks, bye.